Okay, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today at the NDSU Extension Agriculture Challenges webinar. Today we are going to be talking with some of our resources about connecting with resources for rural stress and health. Um, our third speaker today is Lisa Peterson, the livestock of the livestock specialist at the um, Central Grasslands Research Extension Center in Streeter, North Dakota. And she's going to be sharing about some of her personal experiences. Um, handling rural stress. Hold on here. So <clears throat> good afternoon um, or good morning if you're in the um, uh, mountain time zone. So um, thank you, Miranda. And some of you are probably wondering why a specialist is talking about farm stress. As I get my slides up here, everything good? See him or no? Now good? Yes. Okay. And um, I have been as a part of a team at NDSU Extension looking at, at uh, rural stress or farm and ranch stress. And I was asked to share uh, some of the things that our family went through in the dirty 80s and some things that I see uh, resilient producers, the, the traits that they have today. So um, first of all, a disclaimer is I am not a trained mental health professional. I have very broad shoulders and uh, I like to hear from producers and learn from them and help them when I can. I am sharing my family, my and my family's experiences of surviving the dirty 80s. Um, I have a video here and all I'll say about this video is it's going to leave a mark. Um, it's a cow actually kicking a lady who is trying to help her. And so this lady is uh, trying to help this cow have a calf actually, and she just nails her right in the face. And that is how my dad would tell you that uh, going through the dirty 80s in agriculture was for him. It was a, a kick in the face almost every day. Um, I will give you the view that I have through my rose colored glasses. I, I'm going to share my observations of what I see um, resilient ag operations have in terms of some traits and some things that uh, my father and I just uh, discussed that helped us uh, get through the dirty 80s. And so here on the right, I love this little uh, meme or um, uh, picture, if you will, and it says, how deep is the mud? It depends on who you ask. And we all go through the same stuff differently. And so my dad is the big guy, he's about 6'6", six, six, and even if he was five foot tall, he would still go through things like this big dog on the right. And I know a lot of other people who um, really don't shoulder things the same way my dad does. And so uh, one of the things that I think I uh, would help us all get through tough times, even if it's not dealing with farm or rural stress, is a positive attitude. And misery loves company. Um, I, all, I know producers that I really like, I think they're great producers, but I know when I talk to them that it's going to be a downer discussion. And so even if things are going great, it's a bad day to them. And I know that winners have winners attitudes. And while I was doing some research for this presentation, I found a, a pretty new research project from Stanford where a researcher had spent a winter in the most Northern part of Norway. And they, they call this report the Norwegian secret to a long winter. And they have one of the lowest depress, depression rates in the uh, world there, even though they never see the sunshine. And really what it came out of it was that the, the people in that community in that area embrace and happily take on their long winter and um, have decided that it's a great thing instead of a bad thing. I would say to always have try. Uh, I have a picture up here of Secretariat. Uh, my family raises and races racehorses, and it is really, really hard to duplicate try. And I know that in people as well. Uh, it's that don't quit attitude. And uh, a quote from Michael Jordan is, don't be afraid to fail, but be afraid not to try. And as long as you're always giving your best and trying, I think it's really, really hard to actually fail. Um, my dad always says to me when I'm in a tough situation, he always says, well, you know how to eat an elephant, right? And the answer is one bite of, at a time. And so eventually we will work through those challenging uh, times. 
One of the things that I think is really important is to remain or become active in your community in person. And I have in, in person here uh, highlighted, uh, get off your device, get off your phone and inter interact with people, people to people. Uh, I was talking to some people who had survived the dirty 80s in agriculture in our community at a, a church event this past weekend. And all of them talked about how the kids basketball games in the community helped them survive. And the same set of people were all talking about that they were sad their kids had all grad their grandkids had all graduated from high school because they hadn't been out and as active as they had in previous years uh, going to games. And so, you know, find whatever that social event is, but get off your phone. Uh, and I'm bad, you know, I, I interact with the world through Facebook, but get off the phone and interact with people in person. And my bottom quote here says, don't be so busy being busy that you don't take time for yourself. And anybody who knows me knows that I, I'm preaching to the choir there and myself. But the reality is, is that we need to take time for ourselves. And even if it's that hour going to the game and getting out of the tractor, that's important. Volunteer. So my dad would tell you that he thinks one of the things that kept him going through the dirty 80s was volunteering. Uh, he uh, sat on the Colorado Cattlemen's um, Association's board during that period of time. And the things that he will tell you is that it allowed him to learn from others and to remain relevant. It was something that he could do to give back. Even when things were really bad at home and he thought we were going to lose everything, he was still relevant and a part of something bigger. And he learned a lot from uh, his fellow board members and other cattle producers and industry professionals on how to make our operation better. I think one of the most important uh, things that we'll talk about, and it's probably the hardest to talk about, is that um, your farming operation and, and the the financial uh, size of that and the goals of that need to be a team effort, not only with your, your employees and maybe other co-owners, but also um, your family. And when I look back on things and when people were really struggling and when I did some adult farm business management work, uh, the family living expenses oftentimes did not match up with the income coming off of a farm. And uh, as my other presenters know, several years ago, I was called early in the morning by a young producer in the state. And his first question to me, his first statement to me was, Lisa, if I kill myself, will my life insurance policy pay out? And I didn't know the answer, and I don't know the answer today. But what the, the real take-home message was is that he was in a relationship with a, a young lady who her expectations of him financially were not feasible with the amount of money he was gaining off of his operation. And uh, that really bothered him. And he was trying to, to provide what her expectations were, but the operation could not do that. And so for this to happen, leadership has to be open and transparent. And um, you need to, to talk to each other about what the operation can provide. You know, I will tell you straight out that my mom, she could, uh, probably make our family live for a month off of what I waste in a day today. And it was because she was on, on board with saving our family's ranching operation. Diversify your operation, financial health. They're more integrated and holistic and they're more sustainable. And what it does is it allows you to ride the highs sometimes of two or three different enterprises. Um, and you can do that by adding a diversity of agronomic crops and, and or diversity of livestock. And in our operation, we added a farrow to finish hog operation and we're a buying station for hogs. And so it allowed us to continually have income coming in rather than only getting income once a year off of a set of cows. It's important to be flexible and have a willingness to change. Um, in my eyes, and I've told Sean this, and he'll talk about some things going on in New Zealand, the integrated resource management program that Colorado State University offered saved our family's operation in the long term. And what that allowed us to do was we were calving in February in a place that gets over 100 inches of snow a year, um, a place that you feed cows legitimately for a good 10 months out of the year. And so they suggested to us that we consider moving our cows to a more desert operation 
where those calves would graze all winter. Well, it meant that my dad wasn't going to weigh every calf when they were born. They might not all get tagged. It was going to be a way for us, a way that we would have to change the way we did things. But at the end, it has allowed us to um, remain more financially stable and feasible. And at the bottom here, I have a quote from Stephen Covey, and it says, one thing's for sure, if we keep doing what we're doing, we're going to keep getting the same results. Um, or we're going to keep getting what we're getting. One definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing and expect different results. And so when you can be flexible and bring in a, a group of people to look at your operation, maybe do what we would call a 360 review, um, it's your whole farm's health, not only the financial health, but the mental health and the uh, soil health and the livestock health and the crop health, uh, I think you can help your operation. And then uh, use some on, on the farm or ranch income. Don't be too proud to find another job. Um, in my, in those four or five years that we were really going through tough times in Colorado, my dad uh, managed an auction market. Uh, he pipe, he worked in the oil field. He did a lot of different stuff to keep the boat afloat. And uh, the young man that I have a picture of here on the right, is a young man in South Dakota that supplements their uh, ranch income by preg checking and AI and cows. And so that has brought in a lot of money uh, to their operation. And my final slide is, says, when you're going through hell, keep on going. That's uh, in a pretty popular song here in the last couple of years. And I've seen that quote attributed to Winston Churchill. I don't know if he really said that or not, but um, I would just tell you, keep on going. Uh, we'll get through this and we're here to help. Thank you, Lisa. Our next speaker is Becky Dunham, and she is a social worker and farm stress therapist with Lutheran Social Services. And she's gonna talk about some of, about depression and some of the so support services available. Hello, um, let me get my PowerPoint working the way I need it to here. Um, going to be stubborn on me and not want to switch over to presenter mode. There we go. Um, are you guys seeing things the way you need to see? You need to switch your display settings again. Thank you for that reminder. And of course, it's not going to let me do that. There we go. There we go. We'll get there eventually. Um, so I am Becky Cop Dunham, and I am um, a therapist that contracts with Lutheran Social Services, and I have um, taken a, a special interest in um, reaching out to the farm and ranch community. My husband and I farm, um, and so we have an in-depth, I guess, understanding of, of what it's been like um, to manage in, um, especially this most recent year. And because this is, as I tell everybody, this is a population that's near and dear to my heart. These are my people. And so it, it hurts me to see people struggle in knowing that I, can, um, that I can reach out and offer some support to people is something that means a lot to me. And so I'm going to take some time. Everything that Lisa and um, Sean are going to talk about today are things that, that I would echo as well that are great. I'm going to stick to um, the mental health piece here a little bit and talk about well, what you see here is this wearing out your bootstraps. It's a collaboration um, between multiple agencies, NDSU Extension being one of them, um, to just reach out and educate people on the accessibility of mental health services. You're going to hear me talk about um, farm to farm therapy. And I um, am a therapist that when I do, if you're logging on right now, this is how we do telemedicine. We call it telemedicine or online therapy. If you're able to do this, you're able to do um, telemedicine with me. You'll see it in the same way that you are seeing and hearing me now. And I very often do it from my farm in Minnesota. 
and I can reach out to anybody um, throughout North Dakota. And uh, if you have an internet connection, you have the ability to do that, or obviously um, in-person therapy as well. So the, the first um, slide that I want to talk about is that we, there's the, the saying, right, that you, you, we lift ourselves up by our bootstraps. Well, that, that's expecting a lot, um, a lot out of us, and especially in years where farmers and ranchers are historically, and I say this with love, a bit stubborn, and I say that with love, but they're, they're known for being a bit stubborn when it comes to um, even physical health services or mental health services. And this is a time where we need to do something different. It has it been um, an exceptional season, and it is time that we, we, that we reach out. And the greatest asset to your farm and ranch is your mental and physical well-being. If you're not men mentally and physically well, you're unable to complete what you need to do um, around your farm that is actually going to be what what can generate some income and so this is a way um, I use this this analogy I guess that you know the the tractors we have the duels on right to get through the mud this season therapy is like that and so it isn't just powering through and you don't have to power through there's people like me and a multitude of other providers who are here um, more than willing to offer that support with some farm understanding and people often wonder you know well what am I going to talk about I'll guide you through every bit of it. There's no need, need, no need to worry about that. So talking a little bit about sadness versus depression, um, I'm not going to go through, I know you can see it on your slide, I'm not going to go through every symptom, but I want to just pull out a few points that are relevant to the farmers and ranchers that at least I've had experience with. It's getting into that hopeless mindset. You heard Lisa speak to maintaining that positive mindset or that winning mindset. And that really does have a lot to do with it. And, and it doesn't minimize the struggle that we're all going through this year. It doesn't make the harvest easy. It doesn't, you know, uh, our wheat had disease in it too because it was wet. I mean, it, it doesn't minimize any of that. But for many people, and I know not everybody, and I'm speaking about ranchers here, that how many harvests have you been unable to get any crop off your field? Not how hard was it or how difficult, breakdowns, weather, uh, how many times have you been unable to get any any crop off your field? Well, all the farmers I've spoken to were like, well, no, we've always been able to get some harvest off. So you've had a 100% success rate then in getting some crop off your field. And again, not to minimize what, what we're all going through in this season, but there is a lot to be said about mindset. And that's what depression is, is it really pulls you into that hopeless, helpless mindset that there's no way out of this. And that is what crosses over from just being stressed into depression. And so I just wanted to speak to that. Um, I know you have the, the symptoms in front of you, but also um, in general, men te tend to um, filter all feelings as anger um, and or tend to withdraw. And so just because people are withdrawing or angry doesn't mean they're not depressed. Very often that's how men um, show those feelings because that's become what is more culturally acceptable. And so just to also keep in mind with that, also if, if chores aren't getting done, um, the farmers and ranchers I know take a lot of pride in, in their equipment and their farms and, and their livestock. And so if that isn't getting done and that's unusual for them, that's something to be paying attention to. Um, so again, the next slide, it says, even if you, you feel alone in this, you aren't. And I think that Lisa said something that was really important and it's about reaching out to people. And I, I know we all have the technology that we can read out, reach out to people virtually, but there's a lot to be said about being in the same room with someone, right? And like, you know, I love our local cafe. You'll see a group of farmers at the table drinking their coffee, talking about the weather. There's a lot to be said about that personal connection. And, and I think um, having that connection with a therapist is just another way to do that. And especially um, a therapist that has that farming connection where you can, I understand some of that language and I'm not a family member. Um, you know, a lot of farmers are at risk of losing their farms and, and I'm not um, grandpa. I'm not a spouse. I'm not anybody who has a, a very deep personal interest in that farm where you can speak the way you need to speak about what is going on. And I'm a neutral person that can, that can share that with you. Some of the things that you can do um, if you're worried about someone, absolutely ask if they're okay. And there's a lot of people that are afraid to do that, that, oh, I'm going to upset them, or I'm going to make them think about 
uh, if I ask them if they're thinking about hurting themselves, I'm going to give them that idea. And that research doesn't support that, actually. Um, you're not going to give anyone the idea. And oftentimes, there's a lot of relief in being asked if a person is okay. And so I absolutely encourage you to reach out. If you want to, um, if you are a spouse or um, a family member, a neighbor, um, and you are worried about someone, offer to help them schedule the appointment, offer to go with them to the appointment, not even necessarily to sit in, but just to, to go with um, and offer that support. We can make lots of different things work. And so don't hesitate to reach out um, to someone. You're not, gonna, you're not gonna plant any ideas and they're oftentimes gonna be relieved about that. Um, depression is absolutely treatable. And one of the things, again, that Lisa spoke to, our thoughts and our feelings and behavior are connected and that's what therapy does, is I, I help keep your, um, I help your thoughts and feelings and behavior being on a path that offers you some success. These are some options here of where to get help. Um, again, LSS of North Dakota has a website and a phone number there, also NDSU extension. You can also reach out there. Um, this is my contact information. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out, Becky K at lssnd.org. And that is my uh, work cell phone number, 715-5214. And I'm uh, always willing to, to ask, to answer any questions you might have. And that is everything. Thank you, Becky. Yeah. Our next speaker is Sean Brother Brotherson, and he is a family science specialist here at NDSU with Extension. And he's gonna talk about some of the resources available to our farmers and producers going through um, these tough times right now. Hi, this is Sean Brotherson um, with NDSU Extension, and uh, good to be with you today. I'm just gonna share a little bit about um, some resources that you might access that are designed to help promote health and wellness, um, particularly for farm and ranch populations. And then uh, just two or three takeaway coping strategies that are important to consider when you're dealing with times of stress in agriculture. Um, uh, Miranda, I'll ask, uh, can you see my presentation okay? Yes, everything looks good. All right, thank you. Um, so the first thing maybe to think about is um, what kind of priority do we place on managing our, our uh, health uh, on a regular basis when we're operating in agriculture? And this um, particular little graphic asks the question, which matters more to us, equipment maintenance or farmer maintenance? And um, all of us know that um, when it's time uh, to use equipment, get out on the field um, and work, that we really rely on the functionality of the equipment that we use in our farm and ranch operations. The same thing is true when uh, there's critical times uh, where you need to be at peak functionality in your physical and mental health, and uh, when there are stressful times in agriculture, then you need to um, really pay attention to your own physical and mental well-being because you depend on that um, as a critical resource to get you through those tough times. As uh, Becky mentioned, sometimes we can be a little bit stubborn about that. Uh, this is a quote from a farmer down in Australia on farmers and mental health, and he said, often they maintain their tractors, they maintain their pumps and everything, but they don't maintain themselves. So that kind of leads me to my next point, maybe think about, is when you think about uh, listing of your tangible assets on a farm or ranch operation, you often will think about land, livestock, seed, um, equipment, things like that. Um, but we don't typically list our health or well being. And yet, um, it is your health that actually allows you to function every day on that operation, to make decisions, uh, to keep things moving forward. And so, really, um, if you think about it, your health is actually your most important asset as a farmer, rancher, or agricultural worker. Um, it allows you to do all of those things. And it's, it's the resource that is most important to your resilience in tough times. And so it, if it is truly um, 
that important of an asset that you can't really do all of the other things in your operation without having uh, sound physical and mental health, then we need to make it a priority in the way we manage our operations and the, and, and the type of activities we engage in on a daily basis. So I'd encourage you to think about placing um, health and safety as the most important priority in managing your farm operation. And that means you need some resources and strategies that will help you to do that. So I'm going to go through quickly five resources that are designed to, to get you started down this path, and then maybe three just um, coping uh, practices that, that can be useful to you. So the first is think about starting your wellness toolbox. Um, all of us, uh, when we are working in agriculture, it's useful to have a toolbox of things available to us that we, may, we might need uh, for a repair um, and doing a particular job. Um, and so this little graphic just says, start your wellness toolbox. Select three or four things for your wellness toolbox of things that you can start today. Um, this little graphic uh, you can get from NDSU Extension. Just go to the NDSU Farm Stress webpage. You can search that, find it really easy. It's called 12 Tools for Your Wellness Toolbox. Uh, there's a link to it in this, in this graphic. But whether it's exercising for 20 minutes or more a day, whether it's taking 10 minutes to plan your day and your activities, ways you can be positive and productive that day, um, going in for a, a medical checkup with your healthcare provider so you get a, a baseline assessment of your current physical and mental health, um, doing a gratitude journal where you try to uh, cultivate a positive mindset like Lisa talked, talked about and write down at least three things every day that you're grateful for despite the challenges that you're going through. All of these things are simple wellness strategies that take a few minutes a day uh, and you can pick three or four to put in your wellness toolbox and begin. So that would be the first thing that I would encourage you to, to do. The second is um, it's helpful to connect with others via their stories. And, and both Lisa um, and Becky mentioned the importance of connecting with others. Uh, maintaining those social connections, those really help you to be re resilient and to rebound when you're going through some challenges. Um, one resource for this is the Transformation Podcast Series. It's put on by the Minnesota Department of Agriculture and the Red River Valley Farm Network. Um, uh, just search Transformation. Um, so that it's a little play on words with the word transformation. And they have a whole series of podcast episodes where they are in conversations with people who have dealt with various aspects of, of tough times in agriculture, farm stress. They have a lot of good strategies of what they've done, what's been helpful for them. So, you know, um, go ahead and access that, connect with others through their stories, and that podcast series is a really good way to do that. Um, another is I'm going to give you permission to slow down and watch a movie or two, but there's some specific ones that may be useful if you are concerned about, okay, I need to know a little bit more about how to handle some of these stressful conditions in agriculture, maybe with a spouse, maybe with uh, employees or other family members, maybe how, how do I deal with depression, hearing other people talk about it. There's two really good short video series. One, there's a series of um, 10 videos at farms.com. They have a YouTube playlist and there's 10 videos. They're each two or three minutes. And Dr. Val Farmer, who for over 30 years has been a specialist in, in rural stress, um, has 10 very short two to three minute videos that you can view on various topics related to this. The other is the National Institute for Mental Health has what's called the Real Men, Real Depression video series. These are men who are in, in farming, law enforcement, agriculture, um, uh, firefighting, all sorts of areas who have, they're very open about, hey, I dealt with depression. Uh, you know, I'm a man who goes to work every day. I take pride in what I do, but I experience depression. It's not something that's shameful. Let me explain to you what I dealt with and how I dealt with it and some resources and perspectives that might be useful to you. So I would encourage you to maybe access those resources. Third is that um, the country of New Zealand has perhaps the most comprehensive wellness initiative for those working in agriculture of any place in the world. It's called the New Zealand Farm Strong Initiative. And it just has a focus on living well in agriculture, how to stay healthy uh, in good times and tough times. Um, they have a wealth of resources on there and ideas. Uh, just go to the Farm Strong New Zealand website, and uh, that's a, a place to begin and think about, okay, how can I 
start pursuing this idea of, of resilience in my own life in agriculture. They have a lot of really good ideas. Finally, um, there seems to be an app for everything. Uh, so take time to download the Calm in the Storm mobile stress app. It's an app you can download to your phone phone helps give you very practical right to your phone easy ideas every day things that you can do to pursue wellness right whether it's taking you know have you taken a break for a few minutes today do you need to do a little uh, mindfulness and breathing um things like that so um download that app very easy to find online the calm and the storm stress app um as far as coping priorities um just just three strategies to think about one is that you do need to take time to rest and renew yourself. You can't be going 24 seven. Last night I was driving in Cass County and I get it, people are trying to get the harvest in and people were out very late in the fields, it was dark. They were working out there, it was cold. I understand that, but, you, but in the midst of those challenging, hardworking times, also take, you know, take those needed breaks that you need for a few minutes. Um, if you're not taking care of yourself, it's really hard to maintain your health and take care of your family and your farm operation. Um, and so explore sources of personal renewal that work for you. It might be a hobby, it might be exercise, it might be faith practice, but whatever is meaningful, take time for that. Um, and again, uh, take time for some of those connections with others who help you laugh, talk, uh, get a sense of support. Uh, the second one I'd encourage you to think, think about is make healthy communication a priority. As Becky mentioned, it's easy, particularly for men, um, to become angry, irritable, or to withdraw into themselves. These are not healthy patterns of communication when you're trying to manage these particular difficulties. So be open to sharing your concerns with others. Um, but part of what uh, Lisa was talking about is you, as you're out in the community volunteering or connecting with others, it'll just give you a chance to have those positive, healthy talks with other people. Um, so avoid those patterns of withdrawal or anger as your primary mode of communication. Finally, the last thing is Remember to focus on your relationships. The farm operation kind of becomes a member of the family, and so sometimes during tough times, you spend all your time taking care of that member of the family, but all your family relationships are important, and, and if you focus on them, they can help sustain you during times that are challenging. So that might mean working through a conflict, it might mean giving reassurance to children, um, it might be just having regular family routines that that things just don't go by the wayside, that you still have some family routines that you depend on on a regular basis. So I'd encourage you to, to think about those three coping priorities. Um, for more information on our farm stress resources, again, you can just uh, search online and issue and farm stress, those resources will come up. Uh, uh, happy to take any questions that you have now, you can contact uh, me, Sean Brotherson and issue extension anytime, uh, by phone, by email, uh, and happy to visit with you as well as through your local county office. So thank you. Thank you, Sean. I want to, and I want to thank every all our speakers today for joining us to share about this very important topic. Um, we'll now open it up for any questions. Um, and you can either ask them out loud or type them in the chat box. And either way, we'll make sure they are addressed. couple reminders um, while we wait and see if people have questions is that all of these are all of the webinars have been recorded and are available um, I put the link in the chat box they're on the NDSU extension page and if you go to the livestock management tab um, there is a topic that has all of the webinars on and they will also be on our agriculture disasters um, page which is in development right now. Okay, well, we also have one more webinar left tomorrow. We will be talking about weaning strategies given some of the challenges and the later than typical weaning dates that um, are being implemented this year as a result of, of the weather and other challenges that are facing our farmers and ranchers. So I want to thank you for joining us and I'll give you one last um, opportunity to ask questions if there are any questions. Okay. All right, thank you.
Thank you, Miranda. <clears throat> mm -hmm.